the time has come. If you haven't heard already, update 44 is out, and if you open the game, you will see a present in the main menu, and if you click on it, well, it contains the Mermonkey. To unlock it, you need to pop 3 million balloons in medium, hard, and free play games. Now, that's quite a grind, but if you are fortunate like me to maybe have a late game save, or maybe a chimps run, or an impopper run, then I would think the easiest way to get 3 million pops is just to jump into one of those saves. Hopefully you have a good defense to survive, like, uh, multiple rounds. Uh, this looks pretty good. And then play and go on from there, because there's certainly... There's gotta be a lot, like, so many balloons. If, you know, we're already starting this late. So we're gonna go ahead and beat two rounds here. Okay, and, uh, something's things up. I only got 8,000 pops from popping two late game rounds, which is pretty pathetic. I think that has to be because, like, popping a ZMG to BFE is worth one balloon, etc, etc. But you know that all too common saying, time is money? Well, I think it applies here, so if you're impatient like me, and want to get Mermuggy immediately, then... Well, let's go ahead and get the Terra Bundle to speed up our process, and wait, we also get Insta Monkeys with this pack? Damn. Not just a tower, but all of the upgrades unlocked, including a banner and an avatar. Damn, this is better than that Mr. Beast pack. Boy, did that age badly. Also, it looks like they have bundles for the other uh, new, quote-unquote, towers from the past, like Darkling Gunner and Beast Tower, if you haven't gotten them yet. And of course, before I buy this Mermonkey pack, I'm gonna make sure to enter Code ISAB. I think he is an alright guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and support him with this purchase. BRB. Show me the Mermonkey. Is a prestigious Mermonkey profile banner. Nice custom avatar. And those tier 5 instas. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and keep it. And this is the first time you guys are also seeing the splash art because the early access did not have those. But here it is. New tower. Magic monkey. Why does it look like it's the same format as like a new hero? But anyway, before I jump into a game, let's check out other things that come with this update, such as the new trophy store items. There's not a whole lot of them actually. We've got a mortar mole. We've got Clown wig balloons, if you want the balloons to, like, say, match yourself, then this is a pretty good one. Rosalia. And lastly, an I'm the problem text emote. Next, they should add an it's me and a hi emote to truly make it complete. And next up, new hero skin? Yes. Sleeping Sai. If you use Sai and you like sleep, then this is a pretty nice skin for you. And now finally for some action, today's video is going to be focusing on the top path from monkey, the Lord of the Abyss. In case you're out of loop on what it does, this top path gives multiple things. First off, it slows down balloons, while also shooting out a bunch of tentacles, or attacking with its tentacles, in the process. As you can see, a little bit of good damage, a little bit of utility, but also more utility in the fact that it grants extra pierce to nearby monkeys, and it's percentage base pierce. And from some brief testing at Sandbox, here's what I can tell you. The tier 3 grants 5% extra pierce. You can see this by when we stop sending or delete the balloons. It's a 5% increase from this spike factor to this one. And for tier 4, it's 15%. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the uh, tier 5, then 30%. 99 to 129. Not bad. So to test this synergy out, we're going to jump over to Cornfield Chimps, and, uh, well, as you saw in the sandbox, I think it's probably best paired with Spike Factory. Also, yes, genius decision of having the Mermonkey on a non-water map. Very brave. I don't even know if a solo Mermonkey can beat round one, but I don't think so with its, like, super tiny radius. It can barely touch two different lanes at a time. Like, here the balloons won't be clumped enough for it to uh, get the most out of the Mermonkey, but so far I guess it's doing all right. But see there, only, remember, only two pierce. So it really struggles to rounds like this. So sadly, as decent of a tower the base more monkey is, I don't think it's a super great opener for uh, some harder maps. All right, boomer dart start it is then. Worst case, I can just turn this boomerang into a mall press, which would still be pretty useful in the late game. So I don't mind it. Now, if I just survive this round here, I can finally drop the more monkey down. Thank you. And sure, we'll just go ahead and put it in the central spot. Oof, that was close. Now, in terms of cross-pathing the top path Mermonkey, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know yet which is truly the best. Because on one hand, the middle path would give you more pierce, but the bottom path would give you cam protection and seeking, which personally, even though it might get pierce capped at times, I think it's probably better to go for seeking. Plus, you can also get extra range with the tier 2 of this bottom path. Plus, aren't we getting a supplementary pierce from Striker's passive in the first place? So in that case, it might make Pierce less of an issue. 
Now, if we can just get through this one red balloon this round. All right, looks like 0-2 Zubramur does a better job for the early game. Thank you very much. Also, I'm not gonna lie, only use clown balloons if you're truly a clown, because, like, in terms of gameplay, I'm having a hard time distinguishing some of these balloons, like, for what they are, because, well, they are basically ra rainbow-shaped. I know there's no rainbows that come out this early game, but still, it's a bit distracting for me, Imo. Thank you, Mermonkey, for uh, not needing us to drop another tower to be Camus here. Hopefully we can save for Abyss Dweller now, which is the upgrade where you start gaining tentacles and pierce. And thankfully, this thing doesn't pop lead, but luckily we have the Boomer and Striker to take care of that. Not gonna lie, the 5% pierce, is uh, you're barely gonna feel it at this point in the game. Some of you guys right now are probably wondering, how the hell does pierce work if it's 5%? But say the pierce of a tower is 1, that would make it 1.05 pierce. Well, I think in, in the way this game is coded is such that if it has such a small, like, increase, 5%, then say in a 1 pierce tower, I believe just 5% of the time, it pierces twice. Correct me if, if otherwise, but that's what I believe for now. It looks like the tentacles do 2 damage per shot, if I was looking carefully at that. Striker, next level, gets 25% pierce. So assuming it's an additive stack, then... Towers in a range of here, or both these towers, would have 30% more pierce. I think it's time to just drop this early. Why not? Like, without a doubt, Spike Factory. Just try to think of anything that benefits well from pierce, and Spike Factory is almost always at the top of the list. Now, just trying to remember what Abyss of Warrior does. does. This is the upgrade where we start slowing balloons down. Also, take a look at the Tier 3 Splash Art. This is something I've yet to see in Early Access, but sure is welcome. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and get it now, since around 40 is coming, and coming soon. But yeah, we also got level 8 striker now, so if, if the additive math is correct, 40% more pierce. Just like that on the Spike Factory. Nutty. Let's see how good our mob damage is here. Not too great, but the fact that we can slow it down this much is nice. And I think we just one-shot. Yeah, we striker didn't even get a chance to stun the balloon, because the tentacle is one-shot. The balloon's inside. Now, me wonders how much defense I'll need to save up for Lord of the Abyss. First things first, I think I should definitely at least get... Probably a Spike Balls back here. I could also try a Strike strategy, because it's pretty good on Cornfield, since... You know, the map is so damn long, so if a ZMG spawns, you got like... 10 minutes to build up spikes, but nah. Down with stalling, embrace the Spiky Balls. We'll outbuff it too, and... Uh, I'm just gonna do an impromptu No Harvest run, because I think I can get away with it. There's space for, I believe... Uh, Yes, one more Spectre over here, and one more Secret Spot up here. And other than that, I think I'm good, or hopefully I'm good. Only bad news is I think occasionally with the out buff, there's enough range now for uh, the spikes to occasionally uh, drop on the left side. But for the most part, it's doing the right thing, so I'll accept it. It's looking pretty good saving up for it so far, but I must stress, this is Cornfield, a single lane map, which... Given the range, how low this thing is, uh, it makes sense that it sells in single lane maps. I have a feeling it would do pretty bad on a map like, I don't know, Bloody Puddles or what else. I don't know, hell, even Infernal, because you're only going to get, like, one of the two lanes. By the way, this should stack with itself, right? Let me just uh, slow down to check. Yes. Don't worry, I won't trigger you guys this time by uh, not finishing up a cross path fully. Shades of no laser shock on Mad. But if I did the math right... We should get this before the scary rounds come in. So, awesome. Yep, we can afford it by a country mile. And there it is. Lord of the Abyss. Take a look at how hard Ninja Kiwi went out with this one. Sheesh. Now, with a no harvest run, admittedly, I think I've nerfed the power of Lord of the Abyss quite a lot. Because, you see, a lot of its projectiles would usually go through, but it's getting blocked by the corn. So, I did, I'd see, I did see one balloon get ink blotted. At the very entrance, but that was like a, a sneaky one. I'm pretty sure it's not that we're getting Pierce Captain. It's more that we're like hitting the wall with its projectile attacks. But I digress. Damage-wise, not bad for a tier 5. I think it is purposely fairly weak because of how much like it does utility-wise. Not me just salivating at the fact that we have 55% extra base Pierce now in the Spike Mines. That's crazy. This here should give you a good indicator of just how strong the uh, Spike Mines is. With only the left side spikes, with it being built up to max, it has done uh, almost the entirety uh, of the ZMG's HP. Uh. And also, if you didn't know, Lord of the Abyss does not ink ZMGs. It is too strong for it to be slowed down. We have to get it to BFBs and then it'll do the job. 
Kind of disappointed at tier 5. Can't do that, but it is what it is. Maybe Nijiki would want to hold off on the uh, balance train there. In other news, speaking of the balance change, or the train, if you notice, Permbrew is cheaper now. Only 51,000. Before, it was 64... 64.8 in, in hard, I believe. But to compensate, they no longer give range on buying Permbrew. Basically, back to the way it was before. And for the purposes of this challenge, it's perfect, because with no harpist, pretty much every tower is already in range of the off. But I'm not going to get it, just because uh, this thing currently isn't shooting fast enough to uh, use up its tier 4 alc, so it's not worth it since, since the uh, upgrade of this isn't any stronger than the tier 4. It's just, well, permanent. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, it is down a decent amount of time. But honestly, not enough to make me consider uh, buying it, unless, like, I have FU money... Which I currently do, by the way, 54,000. And also for the spirit of, like, showcasing the uh, monkey itself, I kind of want to see it do uh, more damage than it currently is. So I might just fill in this spot with an overclock. As bad of a gameplay idea that would be, it would just be, well, more fun. And I'm just going to do it. Worst case, I can just break the no harvest. But ideally, I'd like to keep it. But I would like to uh, see this thing do better. As you can see, its mob damage is not there. We pretty much have to use almost every spike there. Way to make me almost instantly regret the decision of getting Overclock here. But it's for the cause. I'll at least go for a more press so I can do something against the ZMGs. And now to Overclock. Let's see if we can pop the ZMG layer before it actually reaches Spike Pile. Because now we got double the amount. Make sure to spam Striker's little cooldown. And we should be all right here. Just looking at this though, I gotta spend... I, got, I definitely gotta spend more. If rounds in the 80s are causing us trouble, I definitely don't want to see this defense versus, like, the 90s. Uh, Mob Dom is basically staring at us right in the face, so that might be a good option. Especially since I have uh, Overclock, so we can work on DTs. Because right now there's no decamo anywhere. I don't think we can ink DTs too either, right? No, they're moving at full speed. In fact, I don't even think the Lord Abyss uh, damages it, so... That's one problem with making this thing your main damage. Yeah. Clearly not a good choice. By the way, if I didn't go for Overclock here, I would have gotten a Carpet Spikes instead, and that would have been GG easy. Instead, we must suffer the consequences of our actions. Stun here just 593. Well, that Perm is looking mighty juicy right now, but I must resist. It's not worth the money. I repeat, not worth it. We're doing a pretty damn good job, though. 64k and counting. This is probably the end of the line, if I had to guess. But maybe we can save ourselves by, like, maybe overclocking this thing before DTs come in. So we get more spikes. But I don't think we get the ink blot again, do we? Nor is this Spike Mines a good DT damager, so yeah. I guess Mob Dom to end it all off. Alright, let's see what a 55% extra pierce Mob Dom can do. Go ahead and send last and change this to target down here. Oversized Nails for more pierce. I'm still going to overclock the... Nah, I'm going to overclock the Spike Mines. Although it's probably better to do it on the uh, Mob Dom. Are we not being DTs? Wow. Okay, how about we just overclock this then and leave it on first? Uh, surely, it's got to hold the line. We basically got a 2 2 5 boomerang here because of the Pierce bonuses that we're getting. If that still is enough, I don't know what to say. Other than... Uh, I hope I didn't troll this run away. Luckily... I did not, but that was much closer than it should have been with a damn Mob Dom. On the bright side, this thing can see pretty pretty far, and through walls too. Thus allowing us to actually do damage at the start of rounds. 90 it should be very, very easy clear. Just set it on last so that we have, like, things to pop. While this guy's stalling all the strong stuff. And first try. This round I'm a bit scared about. Let's see which one I should overclock. Alright, Mob Dom, Mob Dom first. And uh, Striker's stun now. Hold, hold. Damn. One Ceramic, of course. Uh, just some better luck this time, right? There we go. Now let's see if we have enough around 100 damage, because uh, with this guy, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think we do. <laughs> Take a look at this pathetic Mermonkey DPS. My god. It's not even at 100. I can use this, but just looking at the HP, it is not there. We popped it. Or should be close. Well, if I just fill in the blanks with a Sticky Bomb, and the money's are for Crossmaster, right? <laughs> yes, the rare time you'll see me do Crossbow and Chimps. By the way, Crossbow got some changes, but more than that, some other dates. Overclock this. This thing only did 2,000 damage. Pathetic. This thing did 8,000, okay. 
We gotta see it pop early. Please, please, please. Uh, now. Cool. Stryker stunned it, and hopefully this thing does enough knockback. Maybe I should have fucked the boomerang, because this is actually a bit too late. Oh yeah, it is gonna be too late, isn't it? Damn, so close. JK, we did it. No harvest with the most scuffed strategy of all time, but that's alright, because uh, we're just getting the hang of the Mermonkey. And my super early and lukewarm take here is that, well, if you use this thing incorrectly, it's gonna be bad. But if you use it with the perfect synergies, like Spike Factory, then it's probably really good. I was gonna end the video there, but I have to add something to the end, because a discovery has been made with the Top Path Mermonkey. Take a look at this. You are indeed seeing that correctly. The top path can allow you to place water towers around it. And when you drop it down, this is definitely not a bug. It even creates like uh, a little, well, portal underneath it. A large ink portal for your subs and boats to drop down. What's funny too is that I think you can place it without even getting the uh, buff from the Murky. So it extends beyond its main range. I'm sure a lot of cool things will be done with that. Now, if we move the Murky away, well, the towers get sold. As expected. There is one neat trick you can do though with the door gunner, and so if you get flavor trades, uh, pick it up, sell the Lord of the Abyss, well, you can still keep that water tower, you just can't, well, place it back down, I don't think. No, you can't, but you do get the discount, I can see this being pretty useful in bosses. But yeah, that's it. Click here for more Mermonkey action, where if you missed it, I covered all three pads in early access, otherwise, uh, stay tuned for a deeper dive into the other pads. See ya.